And you too. Yes. Good morning, good morning. Um, I am Reverend Mary Grace, and we are going to um, have our gratitude and sharing moment. So who has something they're grateful for? Oh, Kathy does. I am. Oops, I keep yeah, I did. I am grateful that uh, I'm going in for surgery for my second knee, and I know it's going to all be great and fine, and I will be right back. She'll be right back. All right, who else has something they're grateful for? Oh, come on, guys. There's got to be something you're grateful for. <gasps> the answer yes. System. yes, I just want to say I'm grateful for the snow on Mount Bali. What a gorgeous sight that is. Yes, it's gorgeous. Anybody else? Mia, yeah, are you grateful for something? No, you're not grateful for anything? <gasps> Adam's grateful for something. I am grateful for family, life, and unity. Awesome. And he's also grateful for creamer. Yeah. He's grateful for creamer. I'm grateful that my youngest son was just here. He lives in Southern California. He's here. He was here for a 10-day visit. Oh, how fabulous. Good morning, John. Good morning. All right. Oh, Peggy has something. Just turned it off. There we go. I am grateful for the beauty of the Santa Cruz Mountains. I'm, I'm grateful for all beauty. How's that? All right. Oh, one more. We're trying to keep it to three or four, but here we're, go we're just like, I started something. Just so. consider it four and a half, okay? Okay. All right. I'm grateful that Jerry Reutman is sitting with us in church and back. Yes. <laughs> Me too. Me three. She's three. <laughs> And we're going to see you back soon, too. All right. And so let's see. We have our, we have Peggy, who you guys all heard singing. Peggy McGuire. Thank you. Welcome, you guys at home. And we have Jacob coming up, who you won't get to see for those of you at home. This is Jacob Broussard, our wonderful musician, who is playing two new songs today that he's never played before. So I really appreciate him for learning them for our our service today. That's I am grateful for that. We could just go on and do gratitudes. It's almost it's Thanksgiving month, right? All right, so let's do our opening prayer. <sighs> Mother, Father, God, sweet divine spirit, we acknowledge that presence right here. We know that that Christ presence lives with inside of us. We know it expresses out as love and light and joy, and gratitude. We love the opportunity to be here at Unity Church in Reading this morning and know that it's a gorgeous, wonderful day. May our hearts be open to receive and expand in love, for that is what you truly are, God. We thank you. Amen. All right, and then we have the lighting of our Christ candle. We do have the lighting of our Christ candle. And I'd like to ask uh, Peggy to come forward and light it for us. And as she lights our Christ candle, let us bless it together. We light this candle to remind us that the light of Christ lives in each one of us. I am the light of Christ, and we are blessed in knowing. And now for our Lord's Prayer. So let us say our Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who is everywhere present, wholeness is your name. Your kingdom is come, your will is being done, in earth as it is in heaven. You give us this day and every day our daily bread, and you forgive us as we forgive. You leave us not in temptation, for you deliver us from error, for you are the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now for a joy song, and it's going to be Open My Eyes.
And please stand if you wish. I've got to. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast this clean. Let me land in the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my ears that I may hear, Voices of truth thou sendest clear. And while the wave notes fall on my ear, Everything false will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my ears, illumine me, Spirit divine. And many of you will notice that uh, I am not Al, and I do not have socks, <laughs> so things are different. But I will bring you the daily word, and the daily word today is guidance. And our affirmation is, I use divine wisdom to find my way, and let's say that together. I use divine wisdom to find my way. When I'm pondering a perplexing question, or I need to make an important choice, I reach beyond human reasoning to the limitless wisdom of divine mind. Never farther away than my next thought. After clarifying my questions and considering my available options, I release the situation, focusing instead on the divine presence within. I affirm, I am using divine wisdom to show me the way. In prayerful silence, peace envelops me. As I conclude my prayer time and resume my activities, I may experience a flash of insight or a more gradual understanding. However, however it happens, I trust my next steps will become clear to me. Confident in my divine guidance, I move forward with calm assurance. And from Matthew 6, but strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Our word for the day, guidance. Our affirmation, I use divine wisdom to find my way. And we are blessed. And now is the time that we move into meditation. Good morning, everyone. Ah, and so if we'll settle into our chairs, just make it as if you were home in your recliner, an overstuffed chair. Feel that just as you take a deep breath, feel yourself just relax and let go. Your shoulders drop. You just take another deep breath. And your body just gives way, gives way to that relaxing as you've dropped from that 18 inches down into your heart, knowing that God is right there with you, holding you, guiding you, 
with whatever is going on in your life. We are so grateful. We are just being, enjoying life, the beautiful sun, the snowy mountains. So as you go within, whatever it is that you find in your heart, feel it with joy and love. So let's join together in taking another deep breath and just going deep within. Now, as we come back into this room, we come back with that joy, the joy knowing that God is always with us, no matter what we do and where we go. We are blessed. We are guided. We don't have to wander in the unknowing because we are that child of God. So I would like to ask each and every one of you, if you'd like to call in those people's names right here and now, friends, family, new acquaintances, whatever. So if you'll join me right now in speaking those names aloud. Sharon and her family, Karen and her family, her brother Dennis and his family, uh, Katie and her mom and dad, my son Sean and Kent, my grandma. And I would like to hold our prayer box in with those names that have been put in there, the name, the people that have put those names in there. With great gratitude in our hearts, always, things are always possible. So through the power that dwells within each one of us, I ask that you confirm this by speaking your name aloud. Kathy. So through that presence and that indwelling Christ spirit, I always say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. So we will sing our next song, and I invite you just to sit. It's more of a meditative song. So, in the silence.
In the silence, there is a sacred space, a secret meeting place, love is there. In the silence, where every color blends, and every rainbow ends, good is there. In the light, now you may find that you know peace of mind. In the silence, your path is paved in gold, and all your dreams unfold, love is there. Peace is there. Truth is there. God is there. In the silence, there is a sacred place, a secret meeting place, love is there. In the silence, where every color blends, and every rainbow ends, God is there. In the light, now you, you find may of mind. In the silence, your path is paved in gold, and all your dreams unfold. Love is there. Peace is there. Truth is there. God is there. Thank you. And I have to thank Reverend Richard Medici for playing one of those songs and sending it to me on an MP3 so that Jacob, the chords were really, I don't know if any of you play musical instruments, the chords were really tough. And he's an awesome musician, but once he heard it, he got it. So I just really appreciate that. All right. So, yeah, I mean, it's effort, you know, to, to pick up a song on Wednesday and learn it to play it for you guys. That's, that's, I don't know if any of you could do that, but I can't. So we are impressed, right? Right, Nia? Right, we're impressed. All right, so again, welcome to Unity Church of Reading, and I'm Reverend Mary Grace Sorensen. I'm so glad you're here, Alexis. I was wondering if you were going to show up right when we started the meditation. I have something for you after service, okay? All right, so today we are in week four of our five-week series on this book called Finding Yourself in Transition Using Life's Changing Changes for Spiritual Awakening by Reverend Robert Brumman. And so we talked about, today my message is entitled Wandering. Ever feel like you're wandering? I get it. <laughs> so we're going to look at how, we talked about the four D's last week, and we're going to look at how those four D's, we go into this void place, this emptiness, and it's really about the fourth D, where we get all disoriented, and we're like, look around, and nothing looks the same, and everything's different, and no, oh, how's that going to be? And then we're going to see how we can move forward with that what we want to do is move forward, right? We were talking to Ron this morning, and he's spiritually awakening every day, right, Ron? And so we're all in that path to awaken and move forward. So during the first three weeks, we first talked about changes and how they're external, they're situational, right? And then we talked about how transitions is the pro process that goes on within us, right? So transit changes are out here situationally in the human form situationally. <laughs> and then the transition is what happens within us spiritually. And then we talked about the characters we have. We have the hem who's going, mm, this can't be good. And they're fearful and believes that the only the worst is going to happen. And then you've got Ha who says, well, maybe this could be good, but you better show me how. And then you've got the um, sniff 
who sniffs out the change and sees it coming and feels it in the wind. My mother-in-law, Lucille, has the sniff down good. She always knows when it's coming. And then there's Scurry that jumps in with change and takes action really quick and just goes forward. And that tends to be me early and often. Leave the past behind, just go forward, because that way you don't have to think about it and deal with it, right? So that's the way I deal with change. I just jump forward and leave it behind, and that way I don't have to grieve so much. All of them have their ups and downs. All of those characters do. And we all have one that we usually resonate with the most, and it tells us something about us. But then we looked at how some of the changes we move through those rites of passage, right? We get, we're born, you have a baby shower, you get married, you have a wedding shower, you have a baby shower, right? All these rites of passage that we have in our life. And then we, yeah, we go through the school things. You start, you go to pre preschool and then all the first day of school pictures you've got all the way, way through. These are rites of passage that we go through. And they show us that we're moving on. Something has ended and we're moving forward. And before we do, we get to that flat, empty void, the sacred emptiness. And that's where we do our work, in the sacred emptiness. And we also talked last week about those four Ds, right? First, we have the disengagement, where we're no longer a part of that. I talked about my dogs. I'm no longer a dog owner. My dog's passed away disengage. And then we disidentify. And I thought I had disidentified with that, but apparently I hadn't. I was brought to tears last week thinking about no longer having dogs. We disidentify. It's no longer who we are, but there's still pieces of it that we think about, right? And that comes up and triggers stuff for me like it did last week. And then we have the disenchantment, like, oh my God, I'm no longer there. It's no longer happening. And this is not looking the way I wanted it to be, right? They were disenchanted. We thought it was going to be better, and here we are, and this is not the way I envisioned it to be, right? And then we have the disorientation. It's like, oh, my God, what is this? Where is this? What do I do now? I mean, it's like I, I didn't say this last week, but Jack and I went over to Ken's house um, on Halloween because we lived in a neighborhood full of children and would have hundreds of trick-or-treaters. And we live out in a rural area now. We knew we were going to have no trick-or-treaters. So we went to Ken's thinking we'd see trick-or-treaters. And boy, were we disenchanted, were we? <laughs> I was like, there are no trick-or-treaters. What did we have, six, eight? How many did we have, Jack? Three groups. Three groups of two. Yeah, we had six trick-or-treaters. You didn't come over, Nina. Nia, right? Nia? Yeah, we were waiting for Nia and her, her, she always has her cat ears on, but, but sh I bet she would have worn them then too. So I love that, but I was really disenchanted and disoriented. Like, okay, do people not trick or treat on Halloween anymore? I mean, I just like was really disoriented, but our household has been going through that feeling disoriented, not knowing where things are <laughs> because they're in new places. And then I figure out that, oh, you know, the crock pot doesn't really work good there. I'm going to move it over here or more likely the hot pads, you know, so they can get something out of the microwave and wait, it's not in that drawer anymore. <laughs> so we keep, because it didn't work there. I needed it over here and we, I keep shifting things. You know, when you're new, you're trying that. And so we're all kind of a little disoriented, right? Newness changes bring that for us. And w it's, it's interesting because now we're having to identify ourselves as rural California residents. That's a whole big difference for us. We were city, big city people in Austin, and it's totally different, totally different. And we have to learn how to do that. But you know what helps through the process is a gratitude list, keeping a list of the things that we're grateful for, kind of like we did this morning. If we recount, I mean, so many spiritual teachers talk about it. You know, I, I, Edward Gaines, Eric Butterworth, Charles Fillmore, Merle, I mean, that you could go on and on. If you keep a list, you don't even have to write it down. You could just say it out loud if you don't want to write it down. But if you say, oh, I'm grateful for that. My car started. I'm grateful for that. Have you ever had it not start? That's like something to be grateful for, right? You know, I've got, I've got my, uh, my tires, all four tires. Go even if everything else in the day is not going as we planned, your car started. You have something to eat. You're not freezing. You're not outside. I mean, all the things that we can be grateful for, you could just be keeping a list all day long. I'm sure there are things we could be disenchanted about or disoriented about. But if we focus on what we're grateful for, it makes life a whole lot better. 
So there's a famous unity prayer, the fair prayer of faith by Hannah Moore Moskis. How does it start, Lucille? You remember? God is my help in every need. God does my every hunger feed. God dwells within me, guides my way through every moment of the day. She wrote it, God walks beside me, but now we say God dwells within me, and that's the way I remember it. God dwells within me, guides my way. Oh, my goodness. There's something inside me, that wisdom that the daily ta- word was talking about that will guide my way. Why didn't I think of that before, right? We have to turn within when we're wandering through the void and listen to that. You're going to learn something now. I'm going to tell you a secret. You want to know a secret? It always goes back to prayer and meditation. Always. Always goes back there. Carol Johnson was the board president, is the board president at Unity Church of San Marcos. And she, every week, goes, you did it again, Mary Grace. It always goes back to prayer and meditation. And that's because we can turn within. I've got us a, ooh, um, a, the next slide we've got our affirmation. But I wish we were using the other one. You got this for me? The light within me always shows me the way. D- divine synchronicity, almost like the daily word one, which is what, where is it here? It was divine, wi- I use divine wisdom to find my way. Same thing. The light within me always shines, shows me the way. You want to say that with me three times? We're all going to do it together with you, Alexis, okay? The light within me always shows me the way. The light within me always shows me the way. The light within me always shows me the way. And what I didn't tell you is that I had Jacob switch the verses on the first song. Because it said, we see and then we hear. But we know that's not true, is it? We have to hear. We have to listen to God's guidance. And then we know what is ours to do. You can't see it for sometimes you do. And then you go, oh, I don't want to go that way. (laughs) Have you ever done that? (laughs) God's pointing the light at something and we don't want to do it. I have to say, moving back to California was that for me for a brief, brief second until I said, okay, I'm not fighting this. No more broken bones, no more car accidents, God. I am going to California. I've done that before. Okay, so we've got scripture today. And you guys have heard of Moses. And how long did he wander in the wilderness? 40 years. Do you know why? Because even back then, men didn't ask for directions. (laughs) No, that's not true. That's not true. (laughs) Anyway. I am not going to read you this because Exodus 15 and 16 is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pages in teeny tiny print. You don't want me to read it to you. Thank you, you're saying, right? Thank you. I'm grateful she's not. I'm going to tell you briefly what happens. Okay, so they're leaving Egypt, right? They're coming out of, out of slavery, and they go across the Red Sea, the port, he raises the staff, it opens up, they go out, and the water closes over Pharaoh's chariots and leaves them behind. And here they are in the wilderness, wandering. <laughs> and they wander for three days, and they can't find any water. And then they finally get to the place of Elam, and there they find water. And in Elam, there are, wait, I got to see, I got it. There are 12 springs of water, 12 springs and 70 palm trees, all standing up strong. And they camped there by the water. And then, after they were there at the water, Moses and his brother Aaron take them out and they start wandering in the wilderness. And how long do they wander? 40 years. 40 years. Do you know how much of your lifetime that is? That's a long time. Like, like a long time. Can you even imagine 40 years, Nia? She can't even comprehend 40 years yet. That's twice as old as Alexis is. Be twice your life long wandering in the wilderness. That's got to be a bummer of a life, you know? <laughs> You go. So they're wandering out there, and they're in the wilderness of Shur, S-H-U-R, not S-U-R-E. And 
it means they're going roundabout. And so they go there and they're in Shur and they're like complaining to Moses. Why did we have to leave Egypt where we had food? You know, we might have been slaves, but here we're going to die of hunger. And they're complaining to Moses and Aaron. And Moses says to him, you're not complaining to us. You're complaining to God. And then God said, bread would rain from heaven every day. And in the morning, there was a thin frost on the ground. You know what frost is? You know that really thin white stuff? And it was, they called it manna. And it was little wafers. It tasted like honey on cookies. Isn't that great? And there would be enough every day to pick it up and eat it. And they, enough for their family, but they couldn't pick up too much. Only what they needed for that day. Because if they collected too much, what happened? It rotted. And little worms were crawling it in the morning. Gross! No! So they, they learned really quick to listen to God and trust God, right? And then they, they collected manna for six days. Six days. How many days? Six days. Six days. And then on the seventh day, they were supposed to collect twice as much on the sixth day. And they did because there was that much more there. And they all collected it. And it didn't rot that night because the seventh day was the Sabbath, a holy day, a time to rest, to give to God, which is our day on Sunday, right? And so then they, they wander and they wander and they wander and they wander for 40 years. And, um, you know, they finally got to Canaan. They finally got out of the wilderness. And we talked, we're going to look about the metaphysics. There's lots of metaphysics in this, okay? First of all, they wandered for three days. And three days, who was telling me this morning? Adam was. Body, mind, and spirit. They were balancing themselves with body, mind, and spirit for those three days, okay? And then they go um, from Elam, right, here's a, and they come to Elam where there are 12 springs and 70 palm trees. Now, Elam means a place of God. They get to the place of God. You think that's great. They wandered for three days and they're in the place of God. And it, there are 12 springs. Water is cleansing. And 12 is three times what? Three times four. Three is body, mind, and spirit, balancing the body, mind, and spirit, cleansing the body, mind, and spirit. And the four is mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual. So we're balancing all of it and cleansing after those three days. Perfect, right? So why don't they just stay there? No. They go wandering for 40 years. Last week we talked about Jesus wandering for 40 years in the wilderness, right? And here we're talking about 40, 40 days in the wilderness, Jesus. 40 years here, right? Why 40? We talked about it last week. It's the time it takes to complete something. It may not have been 40 years, really. It's the time it took to come into balance and find that strength. Now, those palm trees that they found in Elam, guess what? Palm trees represent strength. They withstand gale force winds and hurricanes, don't they? They're often still standing. Sometimes they break, but they're often still standing. Palm trees represent strength. And how many palm trees? Seventy. Seventy is spiritual completion, right? That's what was at that spring, and then they left there. They left the spiritual strength and cleansing and being all balanced to go wander in the wilderness for 40 days. And for 40 years, not 40, 40 days, 40 years, it's the time it takes to complete it. They were lost. And <laughs> and you know why they were lost? It's not because they didn't ask directions. It's because they hadn't gotten humbled and listened to God. They weren't following God's guidance. They weren't listening for that. So what it all boils down to is listening when we're wandering. When we're wandering, when we're lost, we don't know what to do. We breathe and go in the silence. We go to that sacred place and we listen and wait for God to talk. Sometimes we get kind of words. More often than not, we get a feeling, 
of what is ours to do when we go to that place. Now, what the manna is, is it's, we talked about it before, it's universal substance. It's the sticky stuff of the universe that our thoughts attach to. And we create our world by our thoughts, words, and actions. Unity principle number three. And we pull that sticky stuff of the universe. Charles Fillmore called it universal substance. I call it the sticky stuff because I like to think of this gooey stuff that my thoughts attract to and then bring it forth into the world. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I may have told you. I was engaged three times before I met Scott. was in love with the idea of being in love. I did not marry any of those men. I was waiting for him to grow up. But th beyond that, I knew that when I met him, it was totally different. I knew that I knew that I knew. And we'll be celebrating, what, 32 years next April? 32 years. It was worth waiting for. But I knew that I knew that wisdom was totally different than Mary Grace's, you know, ideas about this. So there's this... Um, Thanksgiving and praise, that was part of what the Israelites had to do. They had to be grateful for the manna and be thankful for that to get out of the wilderness and stop wandering. There is, um, an, uh, I talked about it before, Reverend Norman Vincent Peale. He was a Methodist minister, and he read Christian science and unity and religious science and science of uh, all these different, uh, and unity. And Charles Fillmore actually coined the phrase positive thinking, unity's co-founder, Charles Fillmore. And that's where Norman Vincent Peale got it from. He called his book The Power of Positive Thinking. You didn't know that, Ron? He did. It was from unity. And that is where we get this positive thinking from. We want to think positive, right? Have you ever, you ever seen that movie, Pollyanna? Yeah, Pollyanna, the glad game, right? Look for something good is what I call it. You find the good in every situation. But, you know, Unity people have been called Pollyanna-ish for, Pollyanna for a long time, right? Because we just look for the good. And, and that can be a downfall. I know that I've been accused of being Pollyanna and not accused. I take it as a compliment <laughs> to find the good. But even in positive circles, we have to know that there are outer experiences in life that are painful, that are hard, that are difficult. And we have to feel our feelings. We can't go run and be an ostrich and put our head under the ground. We have to face our feelings and feel them. They're not always easy, are they? When we're going through stuff, it's hard. Grief is there. Changes cause that, and it's not always easy. But what I have discovered is that we can deal with our stuff in the moment, deal with our emotions, feel them now, or years and years and years later in therapy, right? It comes back up if we don't deal with those emotions. So let's deal with them in the moment and feel the feelings and then look for the good. Because we can listen all we want, but God can't, we can't hear God speaking when we're feeling our pain. We need to feel our pain. We need to feel our sorrow that what is gone is gone and we are present here and now. And this is different and this is what we've got and now I'm going to look for the good. But you have to feel your feelings first. You can't step them down. If you do, they come back up, <laughs> unfortunately. You know, there's some of us, and I, I, I count myself as one, who look for the good, who find the good and expect it to be there. But if we don't feel those feelings and know that it's going to be uncomfortable, we're not going to grow. And we came here to grow, to progress, to find good and move forward. If we don't grow spiritually, that's what we're here to do. We're spiritual beings having a human experience. And if we have the human experience validly, then we grow spiritually. And it's going to be uncomfortable. That's what growth is. We get to the other side of it and we can see the growth often. I can look back at some of the most... <sighs> anguishing times in my life, and I've had them. And those were my biggest growth opportunities. 
My biggest spiritual awakenings came from those moments. And that's, I think, true for everyone. But we can know we are, we are going to continue to grow. I was saying it this morning to somebody. Uh, maybe it was Ron. No, it wasn't. It was to Raymond. Uh, Diane's who brought Diane this morning. He, I was telling him that when he fell this morning, which is why he left. He wasn't feeling good. But I said that sometimes when that's, we all have work to do. And when we finish our work, we either ascend like Jesus or leave our e earthly bodies. And since we're all here, we all ha still have work to do. And that's what I said to Raymond this morning. There's a, a new thought minister, very dynamic, Mary Manning Morrissey. I don't know if you've heard of her. And she says that life is no different than school. You have grade school and first grade curriculum, which is really hard when you're in first grade. And then you have middle school curriculum and eighth grade curriculum, and it's really hard when you're there. And then you have high school curriculum, and it's really hard when you get there. But guess what? Eighth graders don't... High schoolers don't think that eighth grader curriculum is hard, do they? And, and eighth graders don't think that first grade curriculum is hard, right? We move through it and we grow. And that is what life is. If you have hard curriculum, guess what? That's a compliment to your soul. It means you're ready for more growth. Isn't that exciting? That's something to be grateful for. Oh, I'm so glad this happened because I get to grow. <laughs> It doesn't always work that way, but maybe after you've felt your emotions and moved through it, you can get to that place. You can get to that place. The perfection of the universe has a magnificent way of keeping us in check, growing through this life curriculum, doesn't it? And as I said, perfection is not the goal. We're here to progress, to grow, to unfold. And we can come wander back to problems in our lives and stop and affirm, God, I now release this to you. It's in your hands. And then let go and let God. That's right. We can let go and give it to God. Say, thank you, God, for taking care of this. Release it. Let it go. Thank you, God, for taking care of it. When we use that kind of affirmation when we're in the throes of the pain, it makes it a lot easier. So we release it and let it go, and we can cast it off. And know that divine order is at work. Like divine wisdom in the Daily Word this morning, that divine wisdom is right here, right by the order. In the 12 powers, there's two of them here. I've got a bookmark in my room if you want to see it. Order is right here, and then right in front of it is wisdom. And they work together. When we follow God's wisdom, everything falls into place. If we don't follow the wisdom, it looks chaotic. Which would you prefer? I like it orderly. It just came that way. And I would have been very blessed. I have one son, Jack, and he came out putting his toys away. That doesn't happen, you know. He tells me when he's four years old, Mommy, I like West. I can still play with West. We can play with him downstairs with my trains. We can play with him in the backyard. We can play with him at the park. We can play with him at the play place, you know, like McDonald's or something. But he can't. And I said, oh, good. And he says, but he can't play in my playroom anymore. And I said, why not? He doesn't put the toys away right. Four years old, I swear. Okay, well, <laughs> we have to trust that divine order is at work. And God is illuminating our way through the wandering. So let's go back to our affirmation one more time here. The light within me always shows me the way. Let's say it really loud. The, the light, light within, within me always shows, shows me the, the way. way. And that really whisper voice. And it's in that still, small, silent place where we can hear it. Thank you, God. Namaste. All right. Thank you, guys. And now we have Reverend Ken with the offering. Let me clear out some of this energy. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, we're just so blessed to have that energy. <laughs> well, you know, I'm not going to deal with that. No. 
Let us bring our ushers forward and let's say our uh, consciousness statement together for here at Unity. Divine order is now manifesting in every phase of this ministry through its expanding prosperity, attendance, and by being a light on the path for others. And we are blessed. So let us, well, that's coming right now. So let's do our uh, blessing of, the, uh, of our love offering. Divine love, through me, blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Abundance. Amen. Yes. And we are blessed. Imagine there's no heaven Easy if you try No hell below us Above us only sky Imagine all the people living for today. And I imagine there's no country it isn't hard to do. Nothing to kill or die for And no religion to Imagine all the people Living life in peace And you You may say I'm not the only one I hope someday you'll join us And the world will be as one Imagine no possessions I wonder if you no need for greed or hunger A brotherhood of man Imagine all the people Sharing all the world And you say I'm a dreamer but I'm not the only one I hope someday you will join us and the world will live as one Thank you, Jacob. Oh, and as the ushers come forward with our offerings, let us bless them, knowing that these offerings will flow forth not only for the good of Unity Church in Reading, but into the community and into the world at large. We are so blessed through the receiving of these offerings, knowing that we receive so much more, and we are blessed. And so it is. Amen. God bless and thank you and thank you and thank you. And now, one of the favorite times of the service, the uh, announcements.
Uh, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge our volunteers, uh, Adam at our soundboard, and uh, Janice and uh, Jerry as our ushers. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The church office will be open this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 10 to 4. And uh, you can always see Mary Grace, myself, or Kathy uh, after service for prayer. And uh, we also will have our noon meditations here in the sanctuary, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at noon. And if you'd like to call in, the phone, is, phone number is on the uh, bulletin boards out uh, in the hallway, so please join us, or you can be here in person. Uh, classes coming up this week, A Course of Miracles meets at uh, Wednesday at 10, a Way of Mastery meets at Thursday at 1, A Course of Love is still looking for a time slot and people to attend. The Four Spiritual Laws of Prosperity will be today right after service starting at about noon, and we will go through something which really will tie into a lot of things that uh, Reverend Mary Grace talked about today in goal setting. So we'll be talking about uh, that as one of the spiritual laws of prosperity. And there will be an Advent class starting on November the 27th. There's a sign-up sheet in the uh, uh, Friendship Hall. And uh, if you have any interest in a yoga class, please uh, make us make your interest known. Also, uh, uh, you can see the bulletin board for any of our 12-step program meeting times. And this will be the last call for Smile Amazon. If you uh, do any shopping on Amazon, don't hesitate to join Smile Amazon and choose uh, Unity Church in Reading as your charity, and we will share in your uh, prosperity. You can also uh, join us after service for uh, fellowship. And if you'd like to uh, use the sign-up sheet to sign up, that you'd like to bring things or you know, bring something once a month or donate, whatever you'd like to do. We're also, you notice the box. I'm in the kitchen refrigerator, and I brought you something quite cute. Thank you. So the sign-up sheet is in the kitchen on the refrigerator. How neat. <laughs> and uh, you notice when you came in, we have a collection box out front for Western service workers, and we're collecting clothing, new or freshly used. And uh, we're concentrating on outerwear, so jackets, uh, gloves, uh, socks, Things can be useful in the winter months. Uh, we'll also be doing uh, uh, tickets for our buyout. So there's a sign-up sheet for our buyouts for our uh, December 14th trip to the Playhouse when we're going to watch You Better Watch Out. So please uh, start acquiring those tickets so we know that we are, in fact, selling them. Uh, Also, Shasta Interfaith will have a Sunday evening service. It's at 6.30, runs till about 8.30, and it'll be at Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints, and that's down on Churn Creek. So we'll have, be having an interfaith service on Sunday, November the 20th. So please join us for that. And we look forward to seeing you next Sunday, either on the Internet, if you can't attend here in person. And we are blessed. Any other announcements from the floor? Seeing none, let's move forward to our peace song. I invite you to stand if you wish for the peace song. Oops, I guess the microphone too. <laughs> Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God our Creator, gently all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my joyous vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on 
on earth and let it begin with me. between each line for our response. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The love of God. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming this morning. And may your life be not in the wandering. May you listen. Amen. <laughs> um.